This is Patrick with CE Week 2016 with Bob, the Senior Vice President of Owner IQ. Bob, why don't you talk a little bit about what your company does? Well, we're a programmatic media buyer, uh, but more importantly, in the digital advertising space, we pioneered this idea of utilizing second party data in order to find the right prospects for your products. And you guys have had a lot of recent success. What sort of uh, been the behind the scenes look at that and why are you guys being so successful right now? Yeah, good question. So what's unique is this second party data I mentioned before. Um, so maybe, many people probably aren't familiar with the term. So if a retailer <coughs> excuse me, wants to go after their own customers, uh, they retarget, and that's called first party data. And if they're looking for, let's say, a segment of uh, people who are television intenders, they might buy groups of consumers from an organization, uh, and that would be third party data. Um, second party data, quite frankly, or quite simply, is using someone else's first party data. The reason why that's important is that first party data is great for retailers to target their own customer, but you know, eventually you're going to run out of scale. You can only talk to your own existing customers for so long. Third party data also is great for having scale, being able to talk to a large amount of people. But what's uh, missing sometimes is transparency and relevancy in third party data. You don't quite know how a company identified that a consumer is, let's say, a television intender. Um, or you don't know how old that data might be. So second party data is great. So to use an example, um, let's say H.H. Gregg wants to sell um, LG OLED televisions. They can actually target people who have been on LG's site researching OLED televisions. And then after they leave that site, we, from a programmatic standpoint, buy advertising when we find a consumer who maybe lives in the Indianapolis area and is interested in buying an LG OLED TV. Extremely relevant, um, very timely, uh, it's transparent, you know exactly where that data is coming from, and very scalable. The manufacturers get a lot of consumers going to their sites every day. Matter of fact, um, about 80% of consumers who buy retail at retail had already done research on uh, a digital channel or digital website before they made it to the retailer. So there's all this data out there and the retailers and the manufacturers have this kind of shared data economy where they both have um, the same goals. They want to sell more product, uh, they want to grow market share. So it makes a lot of sense for them to um, kind of utilize each other's data. And what's sort of your future plans with the company? Well, continuing to expand. So in the CE space we have, I'd say, 80 to 90 percent of the manufacturers sign on board, which means we have our pixels on their site. Um, so we want to get those few last uh, laggards uh, on board with us, so that we have the entire, uh, you know, all the uh, consumer electronics uh, manufacturers on board. Um, and then we want to uh, continue to improve the ability to tie the online experience to the in-store experience. So we do work with some partners that give us the ability to um, kind of show what kind of in-store lift we were able to get from a consumer uh, or from a campaign. Um, and we compare that to a control group and we say, well, consumers who had viewed one of our online ads, um, they're, they're, they're more apt to go to a store to make a purchase, right? So we want to continue to make that better so that we have an opportunity of tying very tightly what activities consumers have online to the activities they have in the store because quite frankly, 90% of the purchases are still made um, actually in the store. Yeah, that's right. Thanks so much for talking to me, Bob, and enjoy the rest of the show.